pull every position. But I do think Naga and Rob as well have mentions in terms of their impact on the team. I think they've been playing extremely well, but they have to play more than extremely well. They have to play super polished here to beat Fusion Uni, which has been a juggernaut in NA contenders for a while now. And Fusion University, this is going to be interesting to see what they come out here with, where back in the Zachary era, this would have made sense, right? Where Zachary would play quite a bit of Doomfist, but that was also back when Doomfist was more widely played. And I'm curious to see what Snillo might be coming out with here. I mean, I'm willing to believe this. I just don't know. And no, no. He, the, Your he, belief was not well-founded there. He, he's in Brigida Jail. That's what he is. He is locked in. There's no getting him out. Flex DPS players have uh, been complaining about Brigida Jail for a while, but guess what? Suck it up. Diva and Lucio players have been having to play the same characters for like a year now, guys. Come on, Flex DPS. It has been a rough time. But now we're going to get straight into it. First gen going to be rolling on out here. Again, no surprises running with a 3-3 setup. And it's both teams right now going for position. Now we do have Chainsa going in with the Winston, but Rob taken down. Bernard was able to find him. He loses end early. Now he can't focus things down as easily. Nobody's going to get isolated. And Fusion University going to easily get those first few pickoffs and get the first fight. And keep chasing into spawn, forcing them out, and then retreating. Rob was was very aggressive in that first fight. He was so far up off the bridge, and then he just got, I, he pretty much was, everyone was able to get on to them. Fusion was so easily able to engage. They didn't have to use any cooldowns to get to him. It was just one jump, and they were on top of him. He was way too aggressive, in my opinion. We saw 420 possibilities for them, but he didn't see 421, which is him getting bopped early on. But now, Fusion University in control. Going to be holding back. First gen, waiting for the time to move on in. And your Fusion, you don't have to make the high move here. You're just comfortable playing change and sit here. And oh, well, he got isolated. Couldn't get out of time. And now you're not comfortable at all. With the pickoff coming in, first gen, they're just going to roll forward. They're looking for the Brigida. They're going to find Snillo. And now it's just easy cleanup from here after isolating Winston. And they and that was so aggressive again for Chainsick. We've seen that now on both sides. What, it's this overly aggressive play. Chainsick got the bubble. He committed to the fight, but he is back. And Alarm is going to be able to get this. They weren't able to kill up any of the frags while the fight would break down on point. Both teams having to commit the trance. And now they just decide to solo grab Chainsick and clean it up. We're seeing a lot of firepower coming in here from Fusion University, trying to delay, and it does do one thing, right? It drains some ultimates at first gen, where even though first gen now very likely to take this, they have to invest a little bit more than they might have liked to. And look at this stagger. There's the Lucio Elk. Is, is also with the team, by the way. Our speculation is unwarranted. Yes. And Brunar, he's coming in right after. Chainsick will be coming back as well. This is a really great stagger, the perfect Legion Garden stagger. Stagger. Yeah, this is really smart coming up from Fusion University, where they're very clearly, they weren't trying to win it for that final 20% there. They were just simply trying to buy time, and they were able to do that very, very effectively. Just a little bit overly aggressive, like we said, for both teams on this back and forth so far. They need to rail it in, make sure that, you know, it's, once you get isolated, you get discorded, you just disappear. You get Houdini'd, I've said it before. <laughs> you you disappear from this life. And first gen as well, because of that stagger from Fusion Uni as they approach, their ult advantage is so high here. Nobi's going to be going really aggressive here, and you got to look to Nomi and Naga here. Naga, of course, going to be looking to set up with the Bash. That's why Nomi's going far forward. You have to keep being more aware of the Brigida here, and it's just buying space where Fusion University, they decide they don't even want to go through the white room. They just rotate. They run away because they don't want to engage him there. The rally is out for the side of first gen. They're holding at the choke. Nomi, no bubbles. Shatter, and he's gonna, they're going to get Elk here for sure. Three! Ooh, That's lot, good. Good a setup. Lot, a lot more than Elk in the end, and... That's a cool setup that we saw there. Doesn't have to be set by the Brigida. Instead, you see Nomi just go for the raw shatter, and that's all that was needed to set up the bomb right after. Yeah, you just had to get the bubbles out of the way, and they did. They got Zarya bubbles out. Chains have committed, used his bubble as well. So now you have nothing to block shatter, and you can set up that diva bomb perfectly. Well played for first gen to control the chokes. All evened up here. What does Fusion University have to do? Fusion University, this is their fight to win. Now that Nomi doesn't have shatter, they don't have bomb. They engage. Zeiss, nice, does pick up Zafri. Alarm gets Naga. This fight should already be over. Yeah, the bomb was coming out. It forced a big rotation back the other way. And Fusion University, before you can even blink, they get some key pickoffs, but they're not able to get over the bridge the way they want. They're still investing a lot. And this is very good delay coming in from first gen. This is going to buy them some time to get people back out. All the while, they're getting progress on the point. This is not bad for them in the least. First gen has completely turned this around, even despite those early picks. The boops coming out for both Lucios. And now they're going to play on the point, get the delay. They get the beat out of Elk as well, a beat that maybe wasn't necessary at all. And now Nomi's going to die soon, and that's going to be the end the fight. That's very good for first gen there, where obviously they would have liked to have won the fight, but for a losing fight, when you can extract that much out of your opposition, that's great. They're only one fight away. Those boops again, looking at this, looking at that map, both teams getting boops, both teams having a lot of value from the boops, but Elk, 
having to commit that beat name the fight was really not what Fusion Uni wanted. First gen now, they're going to go around the far left side. They're going to take the fight to point where they're Ryan. They do have Shadow here, so they're able to get the bubbles. There's no trance on the side for Fusion Uni either, and they have a grab. And look at Naga. Naga's going really far out here, so you have to be looking to the shield bash right behind the Ryan. Change second. You're going to go in immediately, and you look at first gen. Buying the time. Earth Shatter in. They're looking for the Winston, but Diva's going to be right there. Going to keep him nice and healthy despite the Zarya beam. So Changsik uses the Primal, keeps himself in there, getting healed up all the while. self destruct to back, doesn't get anything. First Gen, now on the break. They need the flip this weird full overtime. Grab, the use, answered by Transcendence, and both teams throwing everything into the fight right now. First Gen, still holding strong the beat, keeping them up and in it. Swing the hammer, Nobi going even deeper. Transcendence keeping him up in the line, but they're still not able to get anything. Bernard, bomb, back the other side doesn't get what he's looking for. First Gen now going back around, and Snillo finally gonna fall! No means Zap reconnecting, but Rob's out of the fight. It's five on five. Rob dying there could be the end of this fight for First Gen. Not having the Zen or the Discord is so huge. Can they isolate nice? He's so aggressive, another grab comes out, but they can't clean up at all. It's back and forth, both Zarya's gone, and now the beat coming in from Elf Fusion, trying to make this their fight. But you see the shatter back the other way. Chang's gonna fall. Nomi gives his life for it. Both teams down to main tank. This is back and forth as much as it ever could be. Transcendence for fusion, giving them a little bit more room. But now we have Zap. Emergency him coming in. Naga out of the fight and slowly but surely. Fusion now getting what they need. Self-destruct in from first gen. Gets alarm! Orb somehow gets caught! And this fight is still going on. We got Doom Fist in play now. All the wheels are coming off the cart. It's madness, CP. This is the biggest. This is so much sustain, so much fight on this point. Both teams having to swap the delay here, but Fusion still looking so strong. Their positioning, their picks, this is all going the way of Fusion. Doom Fist not dead yet. Fusion University gonna be able to win it off that Doomfist play by the end. And guys, you know what? I, I, I gotta tell you right now, take a recording of that. Just put it in a special place if you have love for Doomfist because looking forward to the future, He's dead yet. He will be houdini as well. Yeah, he, you he, will not see him. He's X'd out on the Hero Select screen. He's gonna bye be bye. he's gonna be in a secret mission for Talon for an undetermined amount of time, which means he's gonna be gone. He's not gonna get played with the changes that came in in all likelihood. It just he, he's already on a razor's edge right now, but we'll see. Maybe Maybe extended Blizzard cinematic universe. He's definitely not gonna get any more spin-offs. No, probably he's not. Done, though. Yeah, it's just like we put him on a boat. Four, Goodbye. Three, but. Now, we move into the next stage, and we're going to see what comes in from both teams here. It is going to be, of course, a 3-3-7 three, three, from both sides. This time, going to be a Winston coming in from Changsik. Why the change? Oh, uh, I think he beat a Reinhardt CP, and, it's, and I think that's because he's so strong on this particular map. They're going to be very aggressive here on the main of first gen, but Changsik goes so deep with Snillo, and they catch him. He actually was way ahead of his team there, and now they're just going to get isolated and picked. You know, you don't really have to be a magician. You don't have to be some sort of fortune teller to realize when you lose your Ryan and Brigida early on, you're just going to lose the fight. Yeah, those are two key pieces where losing one is bad enough, but both of them got caught out together. And first gen, going to get first control of the point. Way too aggressive again on the side of Fusion. I'm seeing that consistently so far for these teams. A lot of aggression, not a lot of control, not a lot of setup for that aggression, and they're getting, and they're just getting punished for it. But first gen controls the choke, and it's so strong here for the GOATS team on the defense to be able to control the choke. It's really hard to get through. Well, you have full ability to decide how you want to engage. And all right, quick attack by Chainsaw gets focused and down. Wasn't able to get the pin he was looking for and the backup to really go in. And instead, it's Nomi punishing, and the fight is over just like that. I don't think they should be trying to push this choke either, ZP. If they do want to, they need to have a much more inventive setup, maybe even get a dive character or someone behind them, but I think they should be going far right, trying to split them from the choke, trying to make them rotate, because you don't want to catch them there. They're completely set up, their ults are all in their favor, and Fusion will be doing that instead. And they're actually faking oh. it out and rotating back to the choke. They fake the far right, lets them go into the left, and uh, well, here comes the grab. I'm not sure it was quite the fake out they're looking for. Chainsaw it goes for a ride! One more time, getting isolated early on, and first or Fusion University, they can't get through this brick wall right now. This GOAT's setup for first gen is playing extremely well. Nomi, making sure not to get caught out, which is the key when you're looking at your main take. You can't have your main take dying first, and Chainsick is dying first a lot of these fights. And that is where the difference is lying, is that Nomi's just staying alive. Well, we'll see if they try to fake right. Nope, right up the gut again. At first gen, they are holding a little bit further back. You see the bash there, but the bash shattered. It's a little bit delayed. It doesn't get people the way they want, but they're still able to get Snillo out of it somehow. So Snillo, I think he was tagged by it in the end. So even if it's just one, that's enough. That's enough. That's yeah. definitely enough on the side of first gen. Getting one pick for the ult, that's fine. And also a little bit of a late bubble. They were able to keep Chainsick alive, but Snillo was still a king.
came down anyways, and now they're gonna decide to commit here. Well, they have to commit at some point. Earth Shatter is gonna hit the back line. Self-destruct. Force Fusion University in very aggressively, very early, but Chainsick down early again. Back tap, back tap right. DP. It, is it and they're gonna clean up the grab here. Bernard gets three, and they get the back tap. Uh, okay, great. Well played from Fusion. They managed to split and they count them in the choke while they cap. I actually think that was the rare Lucio set where everyone goes, wait, wait, they're back capping. Oh, the delay, the they delay, ZP. I didn't look fun. Yeah, this is really nice. Oh, man. When a D.Va just wishes for their own demise, he'll be going, wait, wait, uh, how, how do I get out? Aw, uh, rip. El Elk finishes it. It's over. But they couldn't let him get out there because they were getting close to Mech. And a late pick now means they can control the choke here and they can sit here. They can do the exact same thing that first gen was doing to them. Nomi very far out. He's gonna get isolated and then some. Down he goes. Nope. They, you want a lifeline at that point, and there was none coming. He was too far gone. Yeah, a little bit too aggressive there, especially not with Hui able to eat that damage peel for him. And Fusion Uni, they have control of the choke. Their ult bank pretty strong here, but Vershin has a lot of time. They do have at least another two to three fights to just try to get ults out of them, make them rotate, try to get a pick. And that's a benefit that they have here, right? It's time. A lot of time to decide how to go through this, and they do go through the opposite side. Here's something we didn't see Fusion University do. They are going to be able to rotate over to the point, and now it's up to Zapri, right? How do you use this graph? How do you set it up? You don't want to telegraph it. Bernard's looking right at him, getting ready to eat, so that's something you have to be aware of. Shatter gonna come down, doesn't get anything. Now Zapri drops the graph, pulls in two. Alarm has to use Transcendence in response. Gonna keep Chain Sick nice and alive. Grab back the other way from Nice. Gonna pull in three. A Transcendence back the other way. Both teams still very healthy. Nomi gonna drop the hammer. And now on the other side though, Chain Sick knocks down three. Sets up Naga for failure. And as a result, Fusion University is gonna grab the fight. Chain Sick shatter there was exactly what they needed. That fight could have been lost. The late trans coming out from Rob, keeping everyone alive in the grab, but with the shatter, everyone's down. There is no follow-up at all, and that was actually the worst possible fight they could have had for first gen. They let it run, they let it use their ults, and now they're coming in, and they don't have a lot of ults of their own, and they burned off so much time. This is the last fight. Yeah, they use their resources in all respects, and now we'll see if they can bring this back. Early isolation, chain sick, nowhere to go, taking down early. They do have someone on the point. Tensa was able to work his way back down there. Both teams down one, but as the fight takes place, the grab Sets it all up. It's nice. Able to finish it out in a bit of style. And that is gonna be Fusion University taking map number one over first gen. Fusion Uni looked really good. They shaky at first, a little shaky, but after that recontest, they played it perfectly. They were getting the ults they needed, the value they needed, and first gen wasn't committing to the fights that they needed to and saving on the fights that they didn't want to commit to. Well, I think you set it up perfectly, right? Where you talked about the entire idea of, hey, they have a lot of advantages here. They have time and they have ults. And then as we watch that fight develop, what happened in that fight? They burned all their time, they burned all their ults, and they didn't walk away with the W. So that wasn't really the idea. And it happened here on this point as well. This. This is an incredible brawl. I mean, this last, yeah. this is the most chaotic fight I think I've seen in a long time, CP. This, it was perfect. This map in particular, since the spawns are so close, so easy for mobile carriers to get on. It was just stagger, 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 stagger. No coordinated ult usage, and then Fusion just won because of position. That fight went on so long, and look, maybe it's because Sonic is in vogue now, the entire movie thing that's coming out, but that was chaos muscle control. Muscle Sonic. It, it was absolutely chaos it, control. It's muscle, muscle definition I don't, Sonic Why now. did they give him muscles? But, but Leak had a great tweet on that going like, I don't know what crazy floodgates you've unleashed here, but look, that, that is what it is, right? You had controlled chaos there, and in the end, as both teams were very disciplined, it was still Fusion University on top, but it wasn't a bad look for first gen either. No, first gen still looked good. They looked really good, but... Their focus fire wasn't where they needed to be. Their ult planning wasn't where they needed to be. And they needed to have stronger engages. They didn't look very strong with their engagements, especially on Control Center and their rotations. And if they clean that up, this is 100% still winnable for them. It's very winnable. And I think both the rounds we saw here very well could have gone either way. So I am curious to see what map we're going to be going to next. Of course, next map is going to be a hybrid map. And for a team like First Gen, where they're very comfortable in the 3-3, I'm not sure they would really go away from good 3-3 maps. We've seen a lot of them body. Because usually the team that loses first map is weaker at the 3-3 and they want to change things up. I do wonder if First Gen is going to be a team that we go see go, you know what? We don't need to do this. Why don't we just go to King's Row and have ourselves a good old-fashioned 3-3 brawl. I, I do agree with that sentiment, actually. Numbani definitely favors a little bit more un unconventional comps, but first gen, very 3-3 oriented, so Hollywood, I believe, is going to be coming up our next map, because uh, they're uh, looking very strong here, and we are right into Hollywood, or I'm right. We're all right. You are right. Everyone's you were right guessing. You know I cheated because I saw the Observer feed. 
So uh, I already saw it. Sorry, well, guys, chat. I'm not actually magical. But. You know, on one hand, you gain bonus points for the credibility and the fact that you're willing to just level with people and say, you know what? I knew it was coming. I did not predict that in advance. But on the same note, you could have lied. I could let the magic go on, but I won't do that. I won't do that to our viewers. You could have, like, lived on the dark side there. You, you had that ability, and you decided not to. No, I'm not a dark side guy. I'm more of a light side. Definitely I, more of a light side. But And this is the map that, bringing back to our original point, are you saying I'm not a light side? I've seen your Twitter! I'm very light side. I am 100%. Lies. Absolute 100%. But they are on Hollywood. This is a map that definitely prioritizes a little bit more 3-3 comps. <laughs> both teams looking pretty strong on both so far, but first gen definitely looking to take the win here after that loss on the Jong. We'll see what they have in store here, where Hollywood, of course, is a map that we really haven't seen a whole lot of here in Contenders relative to Numbani, because, like I said, the, the sort of trend has been, oh, we lost on control because our 3-3 GOATS-esque composition is worse. I guess we go to Numbani, where we can do strange, wonderful, fun things on point A. Meanwhile, you take a look at first gen, and like, you know what, actually, this is fine. I think this is fine for first gen. And I do think as well, we do give Frishin a lot of flack for being 3-3 oriented, but they do have flexibility on that team. Zapri and Naga are both relatively flexible players, but 3-3 is more than likely what they're going to be playing here on Hollywood. Fusion as well, running a pretty standard 3-3 GOATS comp of their own. And they're going to roll out, look for the engage, and I wonder if Naga will stay on this Widow. Will he stay? And it is! Okay, it looks like they're going to commit. Unless I'm being a hard debate. Oh, I've been hard debated. How does this keep getting you? Like, it does. You I, uh, he was on it for so long, though. He was just waiting. He was scouting. And now he's going to go to the Brigida. And first gen, they're just immediately going to get through the archway here. Not really contested. And they get to go all the way up to top. And getting high ground here is really strong for first gen because you can actually control the engagement a little bit more than you could if you go around the low ground. It's just a different style of how you get it to work. Oh, my goodness. Tinsa? Oh. Tinsa drops to the ground and takes every bit of damage imaginable. And now that's going to be no speed, no boop. That's a lot of utility gone. Oh, and we well, have a pause. We have a pause, which means that we quickly... You guys can't see it, but we have to rotate heavily. And in part because I'm blind, I have to walk forward, look at the monitors, but then it's suddenly a pause. And it's a very awkward sort of stuttering back here to my mind. I'm not. I'm graceful. You are more graceful than I me. have I'll very swan-like uh, steps. I don't Is believe you. graceful? You've jumped the shark now. You've, he's actually broken believability here. He's only more graceful than me, which is like... That's simply incorrect. I have the grace of a newborn giraffe on ice. I wonder if that DC as well was related to Tinsa, because it looked a little bit like a hyperfeed there from <laughs> Tinsa. I don't know what, because he just dropped and immediately got every bit of damage imaginable for no reason. So I feel like maybe it might have been Tinsa that DC'd there. I don't know if we'll ever learn the truth. I, I like how it's every bit of damage imaginable. I'm just imagining a hero was. sitting he here would, he, as like every other hero is just waiting. It's like, blow him up. Blow him up. It really, I mean, that's Goats in a nutshell right there. And Tinsa literally dropped into the lion's den, per se. Like, he was just off the high ground and disappeared. Well, we do so. have confirmation. It, it was Tensa that DC'd. So, your incredible eagle like oh, I'm eyes. So smart. Yes. I'm so smart. The unbelievable skill of seeing that a player not moving. Has oh, he moved. He just didn't move in the way that he wanted to. Well, it's either the player is disconnected or he's playing Lucio circa early 2017 and doesn't have to get away from the payload. That's true. That's, That's the other reason true. why you'd see a Lucio not move. Give him the wins. Give him the wins there. Yeah, the old wins. The old exactly. wins Aruno. It's like the old wins where it's like, where's AKM in the enemy team spawn? Excellent. I'm going to push this. I'm going to push this payload. <laughs> I'm going to push this. But, but not a great first engage no. for that DC on the side of a uh, first gen. But, you know, it just the map just started. They have plenty of time to come back. They have plenty of time to, you know, make yeah. the most of that, even if the DC wasn't what they won on the first fight. But it should be perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, it, they will have it a chance to bring it back. Obviously, there is a little bit of momentum lost where I would say, generally speaking, we're running these compositions. You sort of have two fights without a lot of ults being played. But if you lose two in a row, the odds that you're going to lose the next three going in are way higher because your ult economy just ends up way behind and you sort of have to fight yourself out of a hole where in the very beginning of the game, you were on more even ground, where even ground as far as you get in regards to just resources. But we're going back in and yeah, here's the cleanup. That's Fusion. the cleanup, yep. Yeah. Just a little bit of cleanup there. Give them the Windex, wipe them. And uh, they're just gonna be waiting for everyone to get back in for first gen, coming back for the next engage. Ults, like we talked about earlier, ZP, still relatively even between the teams. Changsik does have a bit of an ult advantage, though. And now, First Gen's going to come back looking for the engage. Well, and the ult advantage just comes from the fact that he was able to hammer everyone as they were stuck resetting, going, wait, 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 did we lose someone? Yeah, yeah, we did. So, we're going to see First Gen again wrap all the way around. But the problem is, to your point, they're going to have to deal with the Earth Shatter. 
The Earth Shatter here, if if Fusion decides to set it up, could be pivotal in this fight. Only using one ult to win an engagement is really, really good. That's what you want to see out of Goat. Here comes First Gen. Look at the engage. The Shatter, pretty good, ZP. It's a very good Shatter. Drops a hammer, and the easy cleanup just goes right in. Chainsick able to find his moment, and First Gen. Now here comes the pain, right, where they have to work themselves out of this hole we were just talking about. And you don't want to be in the hole. You don't want to be in the crater. Especially when it comes to ults, because that's where you get snowballed, that's where you start to lose every fight. You have to play it a lot. You have to put in 200% to win, because you're so far behind. If you put in a lot and they put in a little, they still get more value out of you. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those situations where you've been outplayed, and now you have to somehow bridge an even bigger gap to bring things back around. We're going to see the rally in here early from still at Fusion University. Go looking for Nomi early on, but Nomi gets quite a bit of support. Instead, they have to back it up just a little bit but they still have the benefit of that rally. So first gen, they're just gonna be taking their time here, figuring out how to go in. They're gonna get grabbed though. Grab coming in, here comes Bomb right to the back. Bernard sets it up, and no, Nomi gonna shield it off. Transcends back the other way, here comes the Shatter. Doesn't get anything, thrown away. Fusion University, Chainsick has built another Shatter mid-fight, and now as this fight breaks down, they might not realize it. Grab, Shatter, down, two in the back. Unable to do anything, they're able to get Hui off it, but they're gonna invest the barrier. They want to be sure. And that is going to be... Nomi does get the... Sure. Uh, they are not sure at all because Shenzhen gets Snillo, Nomi gets Changzik. There's a high energy Zachary on the point. They're going to catch Nace in the back. And that was well played for Nomi getting the charge late, even when they thought it was cleaned up with the barrier. Yeah, they thought it was over. To a degree, we thought it was over. But Zachary says, it's not over until I say it's over. Elk being the last one to fall here in first gen off of a very back and forth fight with three minutes burned. They're going to grab point A. They, Fusion Uni also should not have lost that fight, ZP. They committed both the grab and the shatter. The shatter got two or three down. The grab was able to catch two as well. And they weren't able to clean up anything on either side with either of those ults and invested a beat. But Nomi got the pin on Chainzik. Zafri is high energy. Tinsa was able to get Snillo. They were just cleaned up after that. It was just a frag differential. The fall through just wasn't there in the end. And that was the real problem that they're having. Fusion University, big shatter coming in the other side. Nomi sets it up. And they're going to roll forward. And of course, Naga off the bash, able to make a good part of that happen. And the fight's just over at that point. You can't get hit with that combo and realistically win in most of these fights. Both teams having trouble stopping this bash shatter, stopping the shatter setup, because you can't be getting this much value out of a shatter, out of a single ult and goats, because using one ult to win a fight and build your ult economy even further and get that time, that's exactly what you don't want to happen. First Gen looking to get some momentum here, but they're gonna get stuck in the ground. Meanwhile, you look to Rob. Rob, Transcendence, holding on to it. Doesn't have to use it here just yet. Tense again, drop the beat first, so they're gonna keep that one in reserve. Fusion University, down the board, looking for the chance, but they get caught in the ground, all the way back the other way. First Gen, looking to put him away, put alarm. Gonna use the Transcendence, both sends, investing it into the fight. Hui, very low, has to get out of it for a little bit, and that buys Fusion University a bit of a reprieve here as the fight continues and Naga is down. Naga going a little aggressive there, looking for the Bash, and gets Bash in return. Now the Diva Bomb, they're gonna follow up, try to catch them in the saloon. Nomi goes down, Tensa goes down, that's the end of the fight. And First Gen made a critical mistake there, ZP. When they went to hold of the doors, they had no one on cart. They weren't pushing at all. No, there was literally zero card push. They let them come out, they didn't get the distance they wanted, and they weren't able to, and they lost, I should say, Naga very early because he went too aggressive. And we've seen that happen before with Brigitte players where they go forward and they get punished because of lack of ability. You want to make plays, but sometimes you go a little bit too far and it comes back to bite you. First gen, now in a very tough spot as they look to get back around. They're gonna look to go, I think they're gonna go right side, try to set it up, maybe take the high ground even if they want, but instead just rotate back to the main, clearing, and ults on both sides, relatively equal, but Fusion ahead in this fight. If I'm Fusion, I'm looking for a potential, a very aggressive engagement, because there's no trance from Raw. Fusion on the payload right now. Meanwhile, our first gen just pushing it on forward, and Fusion just giving it a healthy amount of space. But oh, Chainsick under heavy pressure, gonna fall early, unable to be saved. The counter grab comes in, and oh man, that transcendence just a little bit too late from Rob. Nomi and Tensa gonna fall before they're able to get anything, but one big grab deserves another. First gen still fighting it back. They got Elk, it's winnable. Self destruct over to the top. Doesn't get anything but buys room, and room is all they need. They get still on the other end, and they're still keeping this fight going. Zapri so low, he has to stay alive, and Bernard's gonna clean him up, and this fight still favors Fusion extremely heavily. The spawn ad is in their favor. That trance coming just too late. He didn't get it in time for the grab, because if they had it there, that would have been a one fight. I mean, there, there's, you have to think to Rob's point of view, he's just sitting there, just hammering his Q key, going, please activate. And fortunately, it activates just a moment too slow to really change the outcome of the fight.
Fusion playing this very well, utilizing their adds. First Gen just not opening up the fights. Even when they get great picks, they have the fight break down very well. And Fusion doing a very smart move, trying to get the early damage here, trying to force cooldowns. And there's the grab, and there's the bomb. And they use it immediately to get rid of the front line. They didn't even need the bomb. That fight was way over long before the bomb came in. Hui gets a little bit of progress in the back, but here in the end, overtime was on the way. Someone had to do something. The payload, though, will stop right here. Some individual playmaking on the side of first gen in particular. We saw the shatter here. Great focus fire Rob. on a chain sick. Look at Rob right here. Look at his ult charge. That is heartbreaking. Just a little too late. And they do and also there, I don't think they should have invested the grab either. They chose to invest the grab. They kill elf, but then after they're just able to use their own support ult, use their positioning, their spawn ad, and they can just win the fight. So I don't know if it's possible, but man, if we could get a slow-mo replay of the ult charge for Rob and the health of Tensun Nomi there, because that was so, so close. And maybe a Curb Your Enthusiasm, a little soundtrack behind it as it uh, just builds up <laughs> a little too slowly, and they lose two in the grab. But first gen, looking very solid individually, but that right there proves, it shows that investing ults in a fight that isn't 100% certain, especially when you have spawn disadvantage, is not what you want to see. That's not how you want to play GOAT's composition when you're playing it at peak, peak GOAT's. Absolutely, and one thing I want to point out here, because I do think sometimes it gets lost where people at times will overanalyze these games and go very in-depth about things that, that might have been very different with just a slight change of circumstance. Think about where that fight would have been if Rob... Rob had hit the trance would have been big. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If he had that one second earlier where he could have gone from just landing an orb earlier in the fight or something, or earlier, like two fights ago, to set that up. It would have been a very different situation, and it's not even that first gen put themselves in a bad spot, it's just the timing there was very unfavorable. In fact, they probably were counting on the trans being up since he was so close when the grab came out anyways, so maybe a slight miscommunication. More than likely, Rob just had to get a little bit more damage out there because they were planning on the trans being up anyways. So, Elk going for a little bit of a sneaky peek to begin with, but he's going to be going back to Lucio. Fusion University, I don't really expect a whole lot of crazy uh, subtlety here. I think they're going to go straight to the point. I expect that as well. They've been winning. They've been doing extremely well, in fact, on just taking the fight directly. First Gen maybe trying to catch them on the rotation, but they can't. They're going to rotate. They're going to take Cafe, and now they've sort of flipped the defender, the defender attacker positions here. They're just like, we really like that last round that we are on. Let's repeat it, and First Gen goes, why aren't we getting any point progress? Oh, wait, we're defending. Rob is chunked really early on. Is he going to get away? No, Bernard finishes his plate. Rob out of the fight early, and now this puts First Gen at such a disadvantage. They're not going to be able to isolate Chainsick the way they did before because you don't have a Discord Orb. You don't have the focus fire that you need, and it's just going to completely unravel here for First Gen. It's the power of what happens when you get that early pickoff. Fusion Uni playing that extremely textbook after they get the pick on Rob. They played slow. Let the Zen Orb do the work for them. They can just eventually win the fight through power of attrition. And I want to point out, Tinsa actually hit a great boop on top of Cafe. He brought them down a low ground, and they would have probably won that fight. They had isolated Chainsick, but not having Rob means no damage, no Zen Orb. It's the difference between a Reinhardt just falling on his face and a Reinhardt living for the entire fight. It's a very big difference, and that's why you see Zen over Ana. Zen just gives so much value, and as I said before, the best ult of the game. Literally the best ult of the game to me. Good shatter, gets blocked, both shatters out, no presence for either team, and there's gonna be a soon be a trans ad. Will Rob get it though? He's 90, he's so close. Meanwhile, Nice is holding on to the grab, and he's gonna fall. Rob finishes him off, but it still might not matter. Fusion University taking the edge of this fight. Nomi gonna swing the hammer and goes, oh, okay, I don't actually wanna run into that. So shield can be broken. Now looking back the other way, and actually, first gen is able to buy a bit of time here. And they didn't have to commit the trance either. Rob was so low. Nice deciding not to use the grab as well because he wasn't in a great position. And now first gen, really strong. Their position here, they can fight in main, they can use their ults. See how they work this out. Nice still holding on to the grab right now. Both teams, of course, grab up. Grab the out here from Zapri first. And again, they're looking for chainsaw. They're looking for the isolation. The bomb Hooey, in the back. for another Gonna three. Be you know, they were still looking for the isolation, but the bomb, everything they needed, and more. And that's going to be a clean team fight win, and they still have reserves for the next fight. Sinking that bomb right there is big, because they didn't have to commit anything else into the fight. And now, first gen, yes, hold the spawn. I love to see it. I want to see spawn holds. This is, you want to force them to use ults to get out of their spawn. You want to force them to use resources. Getting the early damage. Oh, they're going to back. Oh, you just take a little bit of shield damage and but back nice out. But nice grabs, Eden. 
All right. He shot grab it and got eaten by but, Hui. But nice is like, all right, you guys won't retreat. It's like, no, actually, it's going to get eaten. That's a great play coming in from Hui. And now first gen. Let's see what they do here. Nomi holding on to the shatter. Hammer down first from Chainsec. Doesn't get anything. Nomi, what's your response going to be? Holding on to it. Drops the hammer. Knocks down at least two. And Chainsec going to fall as a result. First gen holding strong right now here in Hollywood. And they're going to be chasing Fusion Uni into the cafe, getting Bernard D-Mech. Oh, no delay at all, though. I feel like they could have definitely delayed Bernard there a little bit more, maybe even forced him to swap. But now, that ult, that Bash Shatter Exchange, they were able to get out from Fusion Uni, but they weren't able to get anything. No, Nothing came down, the bubbles were out, and Nomi able to pin Chainsick. Focus Fire was so much that they bursted him through Trance at that. At first gen, their hold here is looking really, really good. When we look at the time that burned off the clock here, it's still three minutes left for Fusion University, but think about where it was off of that very early attack. So they have done incredible work here so far. Fusion University looking for a setup here, mostly waiting for the grab on their own side. First gen, though, they have a grab already, so it's up to Zafri versus Nice. Who's going to land the grab to set up this fight early on? And both teams jump in position. First grab going to be coming in, and again, they look for Chainsick, but Elk is right there. Drops the beat. Here comes the bomb, and it's late. It's not there for the grab in time. They're not going to get the combo play, and now it's a grab back the other way. Fusion University on the fast break. They deal Tensa, but now the Transcendence re rotates the fight all the way back the other side, and everyone is investing in everything they have here. Alarm Transcendence, and there's the hammer coming back the other way. And Fusion University able to back right on up. This is a slugfest right now. But the rally keeping everyone alive even after that shatter goes out from Naga. They're still able to delay Tensa's back with beat. This is perfect for first gen. There's so many ults used. They still have a defensive one. Self-destruct back the other way. Now they're looking for Nomi and they're gonna get him. The isolation finally coming in for Fusion University. They break through, but can they do more? First gen still in the fight. Zapri has built another grab. Chain six gonna fall. Zapri's charged up. Finally falls. Fusion University gonna get the cleanup they need off nice. The Zarya's forcing movement. But man, that was a long hold. A really long fight. Once again, we see that sustain coming out. The importance of focus fire when the fights break down. Tensa comes back late with the beat. Wasn't able to keep Nomi alive, but they did just burst him because it's not a trance. You can just burst him through the beat. And Fusion Uni, Chain Six back. They're in control, not much distance left at all. First and has to have a very effective combo here, which they don't have. They have no combo at all. There is no D.Va bomb, so they only, have to clean this up. Their only combo here is happening. All right, they open with a super aggressive transcends. Rob! Oh, getting... a little bit too aggressive. Yeah, he got right in their faces. That was a real race car Zenyatta zooming right by it. Instead, first gen, gonna be backing up a bit. Nomi, nowhere close to the shatter, so Fusion University in a much better spot. You're gonna see the grab coming first. Chainsick dives in, they punish Nomi, and that should be enough. It's clean two pickoffs, and they should be able to ride this wave all the way to point B. And that was ambitious engagement. A very ambitious engagement from the side of first gen. They popped the trance extremely early, no one to catch in that trance. They also, if we pay very much attention, they used armor pack. Naga yeah. used armor pack on Nomi when he was far forward, so they didn't even have it for the grab post-fight. They didn't have armor pack, they didn't have trance, there was no sustain. They yeah. completely messed up that engagement there, it, it, just it, a little bit. It was very tough, but of course they were in a tough situation, right? That was do or die there. It's like, all right, well, if you don't defend here, the match is going to be over. So it was a tough situation, but something they very well could have brought back. It was a great hold that they had given the circumstances, and was it enough in the end? No. Is Fusion University up two to nothing? Yes, but as we often say, and to a point where I almost wonder if we're hurting our credibility, the scoreline isn't entirely representative of what we've seen here. I hate saying that phrase yes. because they, it's just repeated all the time, but it is true. First Gen is showing signs of life, it's just, they're just not converting. They're not converting the life into finish. They need to yep. get some sort of currency exchange like happening there. They need to get the energy into wins, into points, but it's definitely there. So guys, we, we do have a special gift for you here. We, we, taught, we asked production if we could get that slow-mo of Rob. I got news for you. They got it. Ooh, they got yeah, it. Let's take a look. So this is, again how things are on such a razor's edge here. Look at Rob's ult charge and look at Nomi and Tensa. 96%, 97, Nomi falling, and look at that in the mm. span of about half a second. And that was the difference in their offense there. It absolutely was. Having that trance up could have completely changed the fight. They would have been able to keep two people alive. Probably could have won the fight, honestly, yeah. off there because they were able to have those two people up. But once again, that's just uh, unluck. That's a go again. <laughs> That's a go again for sure.
Uh, and but we still saw Fershin make some crucial mistakes, and Fusion as well have really good engagements. Particularly, we saw that last replay where Nomi got isolated even with the beat. They used Diva Bomb to engage. They caught him because they knew they didn't have a trance. And Fusion Uni still playing better fundamental Overwatch, I think, just only just using an ult just to isolate someone and clean them up. Yeah, I mean, overall, I would really rate Fusion University as a bit above from what we've been seeing. We've also seen more hero plays, right? Where players like Nice, I think, have just been playing out of their mind here so far. But guys, we are going to be taking a quick break. When we come back, can first generation turn the tide? We're going to find out.